welcome to the Ghosts of Harren Hall. My name's Simon. And I'm McKelly. Thank you for joining us for episode 216 of our chapter-by-chapter book review, The Song of Ice and Fire by George Martin. Today we'll be discussing chapter 72 of A Storm of Swords, that's Jamie 9. And as always, we're going to chat about the chapter and try not to spoil any future plot points for you. And hopefully we're going to provide some entertainment along the way. We'll summarise what happened, discuss our thoughts on it, provide some useful background, compare it to the television show, indulge in a little pedantry, and cover some relevant news and listener correspondence. Be sure to check out the show notes, they'll provide some additional information about the characters and other things of note in this chapter. How are you, McKelly? I'm doing well. I I raced around this evening to to get here as close to on time yeah. as I could. <laughs> your your daughter on the stage? How'd it go? She was. It was uh it was really good. It was a good production. They're doing Alice in Wonderland. Uh-huh. Who who's and, she playing? Uh, the Duchess. Oh. Oh my god, typecast. <laughs> the one who says, and the moral of that is uh-huh. about uh ten different times. So uh yeah, she she did a good job. They all did a good job. So uh, I've only got uh, three more times to <laughs> times this week to watch it we, we're stacy and i are splitting up some of the shows and we're not going to friday night or saturday night so uh, i've only got three myself and she's got three herself so <laughs> if you listen to if you watch like a football game on your phone or listen to a podcast will, will other parents <laughs> frown at you do you think ah that might be frowned upon in that establishment i feel like there's a chance <laughs> Unfortunately, I bought seats in the front row of every show that I'm going to. I should have done it for tonight's show and then the back row oh, yeah. for everything yeah. else. <laughs> I'm going to start reciting lines up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've seen in the sh- in the notes what I've got written there. I do. So I'm very curious I, what this you've means. You've heard of this show, Welcome to Wrexham. I have, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, my little sister was in an episode. Nah. uh I mean, just in the background, but she was there. Well, still. Yeah, it was like, that's, hey, cool. that's my sister. Because <laughs> what, what happened was, it's, it's season two, episode five. They're talking to this um, guy who owns and manages a rival club to Wrexham, uh, Dorking Wanderers, I think they're called. And um, okay. he, he's very, he's got a very London accent, a very strong London accent. And the clip they show is... He's at a he's at a game and I looked at it and as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's that's Oldham. I recognize that. It's Oldham. And he's running up the steps. It's clearly pre-game. He's clearly been down on the field shouting at the players to do something. And now he's running <laughs> up the steps to sort of go back to the changing rooms kind of thing. And an Oldham fan intercepts him and says in a fantastically Oldham accent, he's like, hey, you know, you remind me of. And the guy, because he's got a real London accent, says, Nah, mate, who do I remind you of, innit? You know, I'm, I'm caricaturing these accents. but And the guy says, well, he says Del Boy Trotter, which won't mean any to, any to anyone, but he's sort of famously London-accented British uh, sitcom com, uh, character. And the okay. Dorking manager, it's its slightly offensive, but it's not terribly offensive. I mean, he's just basically saying, you sound like him. That's what he's saying, yeah. But right, he's sure, a good-natured yeah. guy. He says, nah, mate, I'm more like Alf Garnet. And that's another different London sitcom character, which wouldn't uh. mean anything to <laughs> Americans. I don't know why they put this clip in there, to be honest, you know. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> but just when that bit is happening, there are two... Um, there are two, I, I don't know the American word for this, stewards, I would call them. People who sort of show you to your seat and they're there for safety, wear high-vis jackets. Oh, yeah. Right. Sure. They are sort yeah. of in the foreground and the bottom left of the screen. And just between them, you see a person standing up wearing the orange cap that my sister always wears at soccer matches. And she's uh-huh. facing back, she's facing right into this. I was like, that's my little sister. I told her she could not have cared less. You, she didn't tell you this was happening. She didn't know. Well, what that happened this was, was happening? as soon as I saw it was Oldham, I was like, "Oh, I wonder if Lucy's there," because I know where she sits, and she sits right there. So I started looking uh-huh. for her, and sure enough, there she was. She said, "God, it took me like thirty times to find myself." I'm like, "How blasé <laughs> are you about being on, starring alongside I know, Deadpool?" Right? <laughs> Man, your family is all over the the uh, but, but the TV common waves theme these days. is that attitude, right? So my brother was on a Channel Four show this week called "Help We Bought a Village," and I have not seen the episode right. yet. I've seen a tr- little 
teaser for it where he's saying, oh, we'll knock this out and, yeah, I don't know, probably it'll hold. Maybe we can get some uh, dispensable to stand on that thing. <laughs> so it's quite funny. I mean, you know, <laughs> they chose that wisely for the clip, you see. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't seen it yet. So on the on my sibling's thread, I'm like, well, well. And my other sister is like, eh, it was okay. She said, the, f- <laughs> the farm looked nice. Wow. I'm like, what is wrong with you people? What? I mean, Seriously. They're just too too it, comfortable with fame, I guess, already. Aired, They're already over it. 50 hours ago now, I still don't know if I was in it. No. So I was interviewed for that TV show. <laughs> No one has mentioned whether or not we made it to the show. Yeah, you and I were were discussing it yesterday, trying to figure out how to watch it. I assumed by now, Rob or someone on on your side of the family would have provided a means for you to watch it. Well, at least tell us whether we were in it. Would have been uh, interesting well, that's to step know. One. Sure, I'll give you that. I'm, I'm monitoring one. the Channel Four app, which is at least showing which episodes are available. <laughs> but you need a British IP address to watch them. So, and his episode, okay. it's weird because they've watched it, so it is aired. But according to the, when I see the ones come up, the one that was aired on the day they said it aired doesn't appear to be him. It's some random other person. No, it's the guy with the beard and the missing tooth, right? Yes. I, unless I, unless Rob has um ha, has changed his appearance yeah, drastically it, it since seems, I've last it seen It seems him. as like a that weak disconnect, him. you know, a one week disconnect between the tv show but but it, it literally says aired on so i don't know I, I don't understand what's happening right it could all be a, a lie maybe it's not yes, actually happening uh, but anyway if you get too. a chance to see help we bought a village uh watch for the episode that my brother's in it's season two episode 20 something i still don't know couldn't tell you <laughs> I, and my family they're so does the, disinterested does the episode no, have know. a name i don't know but but i know it's going to f- it's going to be it's going to feature wheelchair access. That was what the trailer showed. Was it, they they interviewed the owner oh. who's in a wheelchair, and she said, "I really wanted to be able yes. to come, so I really wanted to commit to making it accessible to everyone." So that's clearly the emphasis of the show. I saw that bit. Okay, I saw that clip. I did not realize that was going to be the. You saw that clip, so did you see? Because cool. my brother was in that same same clip. He was inside a building, and there was a vertical pole. Um, he says, "We're going to take that out now." I think the clip was it was on their facebook page on on the oh on facebook page i think on my brother literally just of her talking i see i see i see yes yeah so yes terribly exciting and i am related to a bunch of people who simply don't care my elder sister all right this is the one who who so my younger sister was blasé about wrexham my elder sister is blasé about this she seems to actively not want it to be on television it's like she, exactly. She's, she's trying to she, stop she's it. She's racing around <laughs> buying copies of it so no one else can see it. It's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, it's, it, you know, it's not like we're going to get famous uh, off it, but it's it's great for the business because, I mean, it's going to be, you know, I mean, a million people oh, yeah. in Britain are going to see it and be like, oh, it's nice, you know. Right. Absolutely. That's, that's fantastic advertising right there. Can you, when you were doing your interview, was there an opportunity to work in the Ghosts of Heron Hall podcast? You know me, McKelly. I'm always thinking of those things. Pretty sure I failed abysmally. <laughs> Did they say, and so what do you do as, as a, you know, what, what do you enjoy in your life? And you're like, soccer. Nothing really. Yes. <laughs> and... that, that would be very on brand with my family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's really neat. I, I'm, I, I want to watch it. it. I don't know if well, I'll ever be I, able I know to that or not, PBS but I would like to watch it. the first season. So if PBS picks up the second season, we should be able to watch it eventually. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. Well, enough of this frivolity. Let's get down to business. How did we leave Jamie Lannister? Last we saw of Jamie, he was getting to know his King's Guard, a collection he wouldn't have chosen himself. He tries to impose some order and, and questions Loras Tyrell's certainty that Brienne murdered Renly. He charges the younger man with questioning her and being a fair judge, and if he finds her guilty, then Jamie will punish her. Michele, why don't we give the summary of this one? Feels like a bit of a gamble, playing fast and loose with Brienne's life here. <laughs> well, I, I, I will say, and this will come up in the discussion, um, given how many people are unable to change their minds about their first instincts on things, it's a big gamble. 
Because nobody else in King's Landing seems to give anyone a second chance. It know? is. <laughs> that is, yeah, I, I, that is definitely true. Uh-huh. Anyway, so Jamie is attending the small council meeting where the new king, propped up on pillows, is signing various papers. Jamie is bored witless. He's also sore all over, having sparred with Adam Marbrand to test whether he can fight left-handed. Uh, the answer is an emphatic no. Adam is an old friend and will be discreet, but Jamie is troubled about his future. Jamie believes that the gift his father gave him of a new Valerian steel sword is mocking, but his uncle Kevin assures him that it was heartfelt. Jamie takes his leave, putting Marin Trant in charge of the king's well-being. Outside, he bids farewell to Steel Shanks Walton, who is headed back to the north with the gratitude of the Lannisters and a new bride for the newly legitimised Ramsay Bolton. None other than Arya Stark! What? The, the kid is northern, but seems older than Arya ought to be. She plays the part, though, reminding Sir Jamie that they met when he visited Winterfell. He's not certain, but he's pretty doubtful, although he recognises that nobody in the north is going to gainsay it. Anyone whose opinion might matter and who would have known Arya is dead. Wow. So that is quite a... Arya was going to pop up somewhere. I guess she popped up here in King's Landing. Yeah, and I, I, I think... Jamie might not be certain. I think we can be <laughs> fairly confident that's not the real Arya. <laughs> not the real Arya. Anyway, he steps over the bloody patch where the mountain killed the stable boy during his duel with Oberyn Martell. Boris Blunt was supposed to keep the crowd back, but he's pretty useless. And Clegane himself was to blame, but he's paying for it now. His poisoned wounds fester, even maggots won't touch it. Boiling wine has helped, but he fights for his life, screaming in agony. Tywin has told Pycelle in no uncertain terms that Gregor will recover so that he can put him to death for the murder of Elia Martell and her children in order to further distance himself from this whole fiasco and to help rebuild the relationship between the Lannisters and the Martells. Jamie arrives back at the White Sword Tower. Blunt and Sir Balan are asleep, otherwise all is quiet. Jamie's tired too, but his sister is waiting for him. She looks beautiful and wants Jamie to intercede with their father. She doesn't want to be sent away. Jamie reminds her that he's on the outs with the old man too. She wants to stay for Tommen. The young king is scared and confused by the prospect of marrying Marjorie, something the Tyrells are insisting on. Jamie's fine with it. Cersei reminds him that Tommen is his son. My seed, maybe, but you never let me be father. To keep him safe. Jamie reminds her of other things he was forced to do, including Bran's defenestration. Cersei points the finger at Jamie. If he'd gone hunting with the rest, this wouldn't have happened. Both recount that accusations had since been thrown about the cat spa. But both still deny it. Cersei recounts that Robert, in front of the children, loudly said it would have been better if Bran had died. Jamie realizes then that Joffrey was probably the one. Desperate for his father's affection. Jamie recounts how Tyrion nearly died for that dagger and then muses that if he, Tyrion, also concluded that Joffrey was to blame, that would have given him a motive for the murder of Joffrey. Cersei recounts the horror she witnessed as her son died in her arms. For this reason, she wants to stay with Tommen. Jamie says that Tywin won't listen. He would if you left the king's guard, but Jamie will not do that, not even to save her from having to remarry. He again suggests being open with their relationship. She again refuses this as madness. But she does make advances on him, and Jamie refuses, saying, This is not the place. She gets mad and questions his manhood. They next spar over Tyrion's guilt. She eventually leaves, claiming to be the only real son Tywin's ever had. He sends Blunt to fetch Sir Loras and to bring Brienne. They duly arrive. Loras is a decent kid, and he concedes that she could be innocent. He can't understand how Stannis did it, but there's enough truth to her story to absolve her. Loras is then sent away. Jamie and Brienne then talk. He tells her about the false Arya headed north. Jamie thinks that Sansa must have killed Joffrey, and Tyrion is covering for her. Brienne, having never met Sansa, is absolutely sure she couldn't possibly have. He presents Brienne with his new sword and asks her to name it Oathkeeper and to use it to go find Sansa and to save her. He confirms that it is made from the steel that once made up ice. 
she can't understand why he would want the person he's so sure murdered his own son protected. Sansa is his last chance at honour. Brienne leaves, and he writes up his exploits in the White Book. There's still three quarters of a page left when he reaches the present. He's got a long way to go to get to Barrist in the Bold. Yeah. So, um, I've said it before, but I really like King's Landing chapters the best. Maybe, maybe oh, yeah. this is why I enjoyed uh, House of the Dragon, because it was, you know, King's Landing focused. Oh, very much. Yeah. Yes. King's Landing, Dragonstone, and uh, Driftmark were about the a little bit in the Stepstones, but so much of it focused at Yeah, King's but all Landing. of that was part of the same story, you know what I mean? It was it was just more laser focused. I mean, I, I, th- I said this at the time, that, than Game of Thrones could ever be. Um there's a lot of there's a lot of meat in this chapter. A lot. There really is. Uh-huh. Um, we skipped over the things that Tommen was signing, but they were very consequential. The things he was signing. So going. They were, and and I thought they were. I thought it was a sly way of filling us in on the political progress and development in the realm. Right. Just you know, just like almost like bullet points. Exactly. You know? We we have it as a bullet list, but that's basically how the book did it too. So right. There were attainders against Edmure and Brynden Tully, stripping them of their lands and titles. And River Run was to be given to Emmon Frey and his wife Gemma. Help me out with what Gemma, what was Gemma's maiden name? I believe it was Lan something. Uh, Lan- Lannister, maybe. Uh, there we go. How interesting. Yes. yes. And Emmon, so Emmon does get River Run here, but he's not going to get Lord Paramount of the Trident, at least not at the moment, because Littlefinger was given that title when oh. he became lord of Hall, so he doesn't get all of the tully strength and power yeah just river run which isn't bad yeah the lannisters are setting up future problems there though because once emmon establishes himself in river run he's going to be like well hang on a second i ought, really ought to be the lord paramount of the tribe <laughs> <laughs> well you know wh- one thing that's noteworthy about this is that Emin is now the heir since the death of Stevron Frey. Oh. Emin is now the heir to Lord Walder. So he's chosen River Run rather than his home castle of the twins. Uh, I guess he'd rather not have to wait it out for the twins, like a castle in the hand. Well, is, uh, yes. I, also, they probably haven't asked him. He might prefer oh. the twins. <laughs> he might appoint <laughs> someone else to go to River Run. <laughs> that I guess he could still do that. Yes. Ed, meanwhile, Edmure is in the twins because last we had heard anyway, he was still being held hostage by the phrase. Right. He so. was the only person we know wasn't murdered at the Red Wedding. Yeah, I think we also maybe heard that Mark Piper was taken hostage. Uh, okay. Okay. Possibly in uh, the in the previous Jamie chapter, maybe it was, but. Um, yeah, so Edmure out, Emin in, and none of this really means a whole lot because at the moment the Blackfish is held up inside River Run and he's right. under siege. Yes. So one other can... reason for Emin to say, why don't someone else go get River Run? <laughs> <laughs> until they can fish Brendan Whoa. out of there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But you know the one I uh, of of the list we've got here. One of the ones I found most intriguing is that Rolf Spicer is given Castamir. Mm-hmm. Rem- remind, remind the listeners who Rolf Spicer is, if you would. Rolf Spicer is the uncle to Jane, Jane Westerling, Westerling, Rob Stark's widow. Widow, indeed. Yes, yeah, so he's been made Lord of Castamir. And uh, it's been a while since there's been a Lord in Castamir. A, a, a pretty good long while. I wonder, I wonder actually, oh, because they were the Reigns, weren't they? They weren't called the Castamere, they were the Reigns. So right. Castamere ke- gets to keep its name because its name is nothing to do with the Reigns, right? We're, exactly, just the Reigns yes. of Castamere. Because I was going to say, it, if, if they were called the Pastors, it might become Spicermere. <laughs> Spicermere. That's got a yeah, pretty Spicer-mere. cool ring to it. <laughs> um, uh, uh, we're going to hear in the background that there's not a whole lot of castle left in castamere right. because uh, have we already told this because i i thought that this was known that this was it was raised to the ground as part of the uh revenge against the rains it was burned, burned. Okay. It, uh, right. it's just left a, a blackened right. broken uh crumbling structure but uh as a reminder to the other westermen right 
to keep it in check. I, w- I wonder if <laughs> I wonder if now Tywin is obviously sort of saying, "Well, I don't need that visual reminder anymore." It's because the song has become so ubiquitous; the whole realm can sing right. along to the reigns of Castamere. So he doesn't yes. need the castle to be uh, uh, derelict anymore. That very well could be it. And this reminds me. That, that I was reminded of this conversation that took place way back in Tyrion three of a Storm of Swords when they were at the the very first small council table that included the Tyrells uh-huh. and the Red Wines and, and and all the newcomers to the small council. Tyrion says. Tyrion finds out that Rob Stark had married, and he says that the he's kind of shocked, and he says the crag's not so far from Tarbeck Hall and Castamere. You'd think the Westerlings had ridden past it and taken the lesson. And Tywin's response is, mayhaps they have. They're well aware of Castamere anyway. I can promise you that. Mm. And I wonder if that was possible foreshadowing that this reward had already been in the on the negotiation table. Yep. And, and just as an adjunct to this, another piece of paper that Tom and signs is royal pardons for the Westerlings, welcoming them back into the King's Peace. So, again, it, it's hard not to think, it's hard to imagine that Tywin would be so forgiving and indeed rewarding to the Spices and Westerlings were this right. not a plan from the get-go to undermine Rob Stark. If they if they betrayed Tywin and now kind of got out of that jam through lucky happenstance of the Red Wedding, he would not be this forgiving to them. Right. If he... Well, okay, but let me... Actually, I've, now I've said that, I've thought of a reason why he might. To make it look like okay. he planned it. Oh. Yes, so he looks like he is in exactly. control. Exactly. Uh-huh. Whereas if you behead them... It makes it look like they betrayed you. But if you reward them, it looks like you always plan to bring him down from within. Yeah. yeah. You did like I asked exactly. you to. Good job. Yeah. And, and if, the, if the Spices and Westerling thought that through, then God bless them, they deserve everything they get because that is genius. <laughs> genius. <laughs> we will find out that uh, they are related to a, uh, I guess, a, guess a, a soothsayer, a... A predictor of the future. So we will find that out at some point. Anyway, uh, one thing I was going to mention is that recall how much Grey Wynn disliked Ralph, Rolf Spicer. That's yes. why Grey Wynn yeah. wasn't around when Kat met up with Rob at, uh, at River Run because he didn't like Rolf Spicer. And because of that, Kat, at Kat's behest, Rob sent Rolf Spicer to the... Golden Tooth with Martin Lannister for a prisoner exchange for Robert Glover. Right. right. So uh, there's definitely some some foreshadowing that was going on here, and it it certainly seems like the Spicers and the Westerlings might have been up to no, uh, they might have been up to some hijinks. I guess I the question that I wonder is whether Jane's coming to Rob and. Uh, you know, Rob was injured when they were taking the crag and Jane kind of nursed him back to health and they fell in love and they they ended up getting married because they, uh, you know, they had relations with one another. And whether that was intentionally done or if the two kids honestly fell in love. I don't know. Again, I, the thing is, I would say that if this is a reward for their treachery, then it was intentional from the get-go. I can't imagine that right. they would have betrayed Tywin Lannister just because their daughter fell in love with someone. They would have turfed right. her out. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a few things. Do you remember when Jane told Kat that she was trying to get pregnant? Yes, that yes. they were trying pretty yes. hard to get pregnant. And she mentioned that she drinks these potions daily mm-hmm. that her mother gives her to try and help her get pregnant. And possibly those were actually doing the opposite. Maybe it was moon tea or tansy tea that she was actually drinking but, to prevent but, an unwanted pregnancy. But why pregnancy would you prevent here. that pregnancy? I mean, like, it feels to me like it's a bargaining chip. If she comes back with a stark baby, 
It's a bargaining chip, you know. Maybe you can put that baby into yeah. Winterfell as the new lord or lady of Winterfell. But a Lannister puppet. Oh, yes. Because he would be heir. If if that baby is a boy, he is heir right. to Winterfell, so, regardless of what right. other siblings and, are and alive. knowing that that child was the part of a family loyal to the Lannisters would be very good for Tywin, I would think. I think he'd be happy to have that. So, so I don't know. Yes. He, I and definitely thought she was giving Tansy tea to the daughter, but now I wonder if it was actually a good idea. Yeah, and that child wouldn't even right. be a bastard they were married. because they were married. So that would be a legitimate heir to Winterfell. Yeah. Now, whether Jane knew about it, I- I'm not so sure. E- she must have been one heck of an actress yeah. to pull that off, that she was really... Her really elders could definitely to it. force that, you know. You go nurse him. Make sure you give him a bed bath. He'll like that. Right. <laughs> Wear right. your hair up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and remember, she rode halfway to the twins for one last goodbye with Rob. So it certainly seemed like she was in love. Anyway, we've we've spent a long we, time on the Spicers and Westerlings, but I think it's We can't really... help it. We just love young love. Right. So th- as well, there were pardons for the Bracken, <laughs> Vance, Mouton, and Goodbrook. They were all river lords who bent the knee, right? Nothing much more to say about that. Yes, yeah. Remember Tywin last... Uh, I don't remember which chapter, but not that long ago, thought that Jonas Bracken might be... Uh, a target to bend in the knee. They thought he might be one of the one of the river lords who might be the first to uh, to to take that knee bend. But there was no mention of Titus Blackwood, so it seems that they're still either siding with Brendan Blackfish Tully or the Starks. Uh, I mean, you know, only one of those families was ever going to do it. The Brackens have done it. Well, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, exactly. Whoever got to it first. <laughs> There's two branches of the Vances, so it's unclear which Vance. There's Lord Norbert Vance and Carl Vance, so we can't say for sure. And the last thing he does, the last thing he signs is a legitimizing of Ramsay Snow to Ramsay uh-huh. Bolton for his services. So, yeah, not not that long ago, Roose was disowning Ramsay for the trouble yeah. with uh, Lady Hornwood. I don't believe a word out of uh, no, Lewis Bolton's mouth. No. Just so you know. Definitely no surprise that he was uh, given the title Warden of the North. I think everybody knew that was coming at this point. We'll be right back. Hello, friends. Are you ready to make some unforgettable memories? Well, if so, consider the Marriott Bonvoy program. Discover the perfect destination for your summer getaway and unlock exclusive deals on luxurious accommodations. With our affiliate partnership, you'll enjoy unbeatable savings and a seamless booking experience. Don't let summer slip away. Visit Marriott Bonvoy today and make this vacation season one for the books. Use our Ghosts of Heron Hall affiliate page to check it all out and buy Bonvoy points or give some as a gift. The link to our page is in the show notes. Yeah. So, so back to Jamie. So he's had a, a spa with uh, Adam Marbrand and it's gone very, very badly. He's had his backside handed to him and he's been beaten black and blue with uh, uh, tourney swords. Uh, he always worried that he wasn't going to be able to fight left handed. And he, the, the description here is that it's not just learning to swing the left hand, but it's every movement yes, that he, has he to makes. Think is now what was natural is completely right. unnatural now. So he just doesn't see... I mean, you can always practice, you know, 10,000 hours of practice will make you pretty good at just about anything, but he doesn't think he can realistically get into a fight. Yeah. It, but his reputation proceeds. Right. Him. That'll create a, a that'll create some... For a while, until do. someone is like, you know what, let's see you fight with that left hand. At some point, there'll be another tourney. Will he even be able to joust with a with only one hand with his left hand? Jousting might be easier actually because oh no 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 wrong handed yeah I think you have to joust. I was thinking about that the other day actually. Is there are certain sports that you have to play right handed? One of them is oh. field hockey. You have to play really? field hockey right handed. You're not allowed to play. I did not know the, that. Yeah. The because the field hockey stick is not two sided. You're only allowed to use the front face of the field oh. hockey stick, and all of them are right handed sticks. You can't huh. have a left handed stick. Um, but jousting, if you're 
if you wanted to joust left-handed, <laughs> you'd be you'd be well, riding you alongside joust, joust that. Too. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> so I don't know what the rules are, but it did occur to only me left-handers could joust left-handers, but, but actually, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's kind of risky for him to be sparring with Adam Marbrand. He he mentions, well, he tells us in his head that they're old friends. They've known each other since they were boys. But as he also mentions, one slip of the tongue, uh, you know, when he's in his cups about how he beats up Jamie Lannister every day or something could be a yeah. big trouble. And all, I also wonder how they keep it a secret that they're doing it. You know, I mean, like, because... It must be the Tony Yards. I mean, do you get them to turn their back? <laughs> Maybe they you go know? down into the dungeons or something, down into like the Dragon Skull room. This is sounding awfully homoerotic <laughs> at this point, I've got to say. <laughs> Just so you know. Uh, so we don't know who the false Arya is, but we do have an excellent we do. candidate. Uh, can we speculate on this? I don't think it's a spoiler to speculate because it's, it's only speculation. Right. Way back in game of thrones sansa's friend jane Poole was captured and separated from sansa because she was filling sansa full of uh, filling sansa's head full of knowledge and and you know but right. horrible stories but they were actually true um she's not been seen since she is northern so the general look and accent should hold up but she was sansa's age so as jamie points out this kid seems a little bit too old to yes, be yes that is a problem so she's a good candidate and also, she was present for things like Jamie meeting Arya. So that kind of story holds. Yes, up she's lived her whole well. life in Winterfell, basically almost as a Stark right. daughter. She knows it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's hard to think of a better candidate. If oh yeah, absolutely. And, and, and on, honestly, if P, if Peter Littlefinger Baelish dragged her away to teach her to be Arya, then thank goodness because we had much worse thoughts in yes, mind when he yes, did. Yes, we did. And and now it all makes mm. sense. Roos's talk of having found Arya and taking her north with him. Remember, we had conjectured that possibly there was a spy in the Brotherhood Without Banners that knew of Arya's presence. Right. It turns out, it seems they were just making the whole thing up. Make it right. But right, there right, is right. a... The, perfect. She might be perfect for this role, but I do worry about her in her future role of uh, Mrs. Ramsay Bolton. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly, being Peter Littlefinger Baelish's cat toy would seem yeah, preferable, I feel. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that, that scares me. His last marriage was was yeah. the horrible fiasco with Danella Hornwood, where she ended up dying of starvation in a, Ugh. locked in a tower cell, so. Mm. Eating yes, her own fingers exactly. kind of thing, yes. Although I will say, it's pretty heads so, up of, of Jamie. To tell Brienne, that's not the real Arya before you go chasing after <laughs> all those Northmen. Right, 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 right. Because she yeah. absolutely would have. So, would have, yes, had she heard. But telling her, don't fall for that, it's it's a lie, has saved her a, a suicidal wild <laughs> right. goose chase. So, so Gregor Clegane did not die in the in the battle with Oberyn Martell, which is terrible news for Tyrion, by the way. Not that anyone really cared about the details, but uh, Tywin's hopes to nurse him back to execution is very much on the for Tywin. Uh, it's also possibly bad news for Grandmaster Pycelle, because as tough as the mountain is, he's got to be near death's door. I mean, the wounds by themselves, but... Uh, He's that he's poisoned as well. I mean, you're saying that the things he uses, he uses maggots to clean the wounds. They won't even touch right. it. It's so poisoned. So, it's yeah, I, I don't. I'm not completely sure why they just don't let him die and then send his body and bones back. Yeah. Why do they need to heal him back to health only to kill him? Yeah, I mean, drag him not healthy and yes, chop his exactly. Head off, you know? They won't be able to tell by the bones and the you know his dead body whether he died from being poisoned or not and you know they mention in their conversation tywin in in picel that all the dornishmen are leaving town so there's right i did wonder about that the quicker you do it the more witnesses yeah, you have yeah or... do a quick execution hey before you leave <laughs> i guess that's one take that <laughs> home with you 
There is a, a, an, another interesting development in this conversation here between Pycelle and Tywin, and that is that there's only a token force at Dragonstone. And uh, it's, it's become extra important for Tywin to appease the Martells because he's worried that Stannis is making his way to Sunspear to make a pact with the Martells, and they might right, just be mad enough right, right, to, right. to do it. Exactly. So, yeah, the, these Dornishmen are not coming home with good news. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, we'll have to see where, where... I mean, plus they all heard what the Mountain said when he killed Oberyn. He br- widely announced that he was guilty of all yes, the crimes. Yes, he did. That's right. He can't go around killing all the Dornishmen. <laughs> I wouldn't right. put that past Tywin. <laughs> oh, they all died somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so so then uh after he said goodbye to uh steel shanks who's taking the false aria home he thinks about uh uh the mountain how the mountains die next he goes back to the tower of the white sword uh where the king's guard live and he finds cersei in his bedroom and she tries to use the fact that she's being forced to marry someone to get Jamie to leave the King's Guard, but he won't countenance it. Uh, I do wonder, though, in light of the beatdown from Adam Marbrand, if he really should think about it. Right. Because the King's Guard needs to protect the King, and the King yes. is his son. You would think he would want the King's Guard to be as strong as possible. Now, I think he would make a good Lord Commander of the King's Guard, but he's useless. So why not admit that, step yeah. down, live the yeah, life you want like to live? it seems like Jamie could have everything he wants. If he would just take it, but he's refusing to him and Cersei, yeah. Cersei, he says, if I step down, he'll send me to Casterly Rock. And Cersei's like, me too. We'll, we'll be in Casterly Rock together. Right. So they'll be in Casterly Rock together away from the eyes of their father, who will be remaining in King's Landing. Now, yes, Tywin will probably make them both remarry. For a time, they will be together right. at least in Casterly Rock. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and as you said, he's just no longer useful. Would... He could be like the Lord Commander Administrator. I'm, he does seem like he's right. you know, got a good head on his shoulders for for this kind of thing. But right, if right. it comes to fighting, for recruiting and organizing them, yes, that would I think he'd be good at. You know, maybe even training. Them, right. You know, but being one of the seven, you're leaving a hole yeah. basically. I will say, though, I think I think one thing I'm noticing is that his self-worth is tied up in that white cloak in a way. You remember the story goes that he only took it. To, he only became a member of the King's Guard to stay close to Cersei. Right. That was why he did it. But now he's using it to keep away from Cersei. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he's his his self-image is tied up in that white cloak, which is also strange because because. The thing that he's most notorious for is because he was a king's yeah. guard. If he just killed the Mad King Aerys, everyone would be like, oh, well done. Yeah. But because he was the king's guard, yeah. he did it. You know what else is not bad for your self-worth is being the heir to Casterly Rock. And you know what right. you don't need to right. be the heir of Casterly Rock? Two hands. Yes. A right hand? You can do it with yeah. just one hand. It really it doesn't change much at all. We'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by Audible. To get a free audiobook or two if you're an Amazon Prime member, go to our exclusive URL, audibletrial.com slash ghostsherrenhall. You can find the link in our show notes. Can we just take a moment to admire the goal (laughs) of Jamie? Jamie... I had sex with my sister in the Great Sept of Baylor over the body of our dead incestuous child. And he says, this is not the place in his bedroom. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there is some weird standard going on here that I can't quite wrap my head around. They, he's, uh-huh. he's thinking to himself, we've never done that in this tower, let alone in the Lord Commander's chambers. That's where he lives. That's his bedroom. So, right. I think. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But 
This is something we only do in the queen's <laughs> bedroom. Okay. Uh, but I feel a little bit like Cersei's kind of talking out both sides of her mouth in the conversation she's having with Jamie. She tells Jamie to leave the Kingsguard, to go to Casterly Rock so that they could be together. And then she also begs Jamie not to let Tywin separate her from Tommen. But she can't do they can't do both because Tommen's not leaving King's Landing. Yeah. So if Cer- Cersei wants to stay yeah. with him, then she's got to stay in King's Landing. Jamie would go back to Casterly Rock. So uh you know, but ultimately it will be a moot point anyway yeah. because every because she knows Tywin's planning on remarrying her and if Jamie becomes yeah. heir to Casterly Rock, he'd have to get married and have children as well to keep the air flowing. Yeah. yeah. Jamie also expresses to Cersei that he does not believe that Tyrion is guilty, or at least he's uncertain about it, despite the way the two trials went, both the by combat and the courtroom, both went badly against Tyrion. But he's his brother, and he talked to him, and he was just sure that it wasn't true. So Yeah, do you... You understand why he's... I find that kind of surprising. Oh. <laughs> because Jamie, uh, you know, they're talking about the trial. And Cersei says, you know, calls him, he can go to hell with his lies or whatever. And he, Jamie says, he doesn't lie to me. Which sounds uh, like they had a conversation, Jamie and Tyrion, where Tyrion said to him, I didn't do it. And I find it kind of surprising that we haven't been let in on that conversation yet right because they're both, <laughs> both. POV characters we could have had yes. it from either side if neither yeah. one of them have thought about it so if it happened it happened off camera and we haven't been made aware because i i just said that earlier and i realized that wasn't actually in the book they did have the conversation in the tv show and when in this confrontation between jamie and cersei he says he told me he didn't do it and I believe him. So, you know, we actually, those, oh, those events did okay. happen to yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah, it would make sense that they've talked. We've questioned, why have we not seen the two of them ha- interact? It's just odd that we hear it yeah. off, that it would happen off yeah. camera and that we wouldn't get it either live or in a yeah. flashback. But, you know, I feel like Cersei, I, I question her sincerity a little bit here. Uh, that's no. the thing like with Cersei you never know she says all the right things she yeah. tells him that he is her shining star and she wants to be his wife just as much as he wants her to be his wife and that she wants no other man in her bed and she cries and she you know makes a sexual advance at him and but and, and that seems all legitimate except for that we've seen her use all these kind of things to get what she wants yes. before. So it's hard yes. to say what's being what is legitimate and honest and what is her trying to get him to do what she wants him to do. Yeah. C- Cersei and Jamie um solve the mystery of the cat spore, at least to the their own satisfaction right. anyway, I think. I mean, I don't think Cersei wants to believe it, but Jamie was like, Oh yeah, that's this makes sense. This tracks. Uh basically because Robert said that he thought that it would be better if Bran had died and his children heard that, that one of them acted upon it and arranged for that, for Bran to be killed. And if you peel away layers of evil <laughs> at its very heart, you'll find Joffrey <laughs> Baratheon. Uh, but there is a sort of tragic element to that too, that, you know, that little cycle would do it just to earn his father's approval. It's just kind of... yeah. And how, and 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 how does it work? How are you going to get approval for that? I was one. I was wondering the same thing. He he never took credit for it to our knowledge. Right. So what was the point? Set it up, leave, and never mention it again. Yeah. Like, it's, how is that going to get any approval from anybody? I, I I can't decide if if they've jumped to a not necessarily completely convincing conclusion, or if George Martin's just got bored of this part of the story and wants to sort of draw a line under it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we've certainly made plenty of conjectures about who the cat spa with the dagger was. And this one, this one does have some teeth. It, For sure. It fits. It, it's just the, the motive is a little bit yeah. lacking. The, the motive makes a certain amount of sense. It makes a certain amount of sense, but you just don't see how it's going to parlay into the outcome that Joffrey would want from that, you know? Yes, well said. Yes, exactly. Yes. 
But, you know, we've uh, Cersei is the leading candidate, but she just denied it to Jamie. Keeps denying it. So it, it seems really, uh, yeah, yeah, over it and seems over really again, unlikely yeah. that it was her. So uh, Joffrey's as good as as good as option as we have thus far. Yeah, 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 for sure. I I can't think of anyone better. For, I mean, unless Peter Baelish just, okay, this plan is not going to do itself. Let me do it for everyone, you know. <laughs> yeah. I will send the dagger yeah. that I will say was Tyrion's. <laughs> He's really playing the long game there. Yeah. So I'll tell you who needed Sir Loras Tyrell as the judge was Tyrion Lannister. Do tell. <laughs> yes, because yes, he does. So Loras listened to the evidence and changed his mind. God bless him. <laughs> yeah, the only thing is, is Tyrion never presented any kind of evidence. He just said, "I didn't do it." Right. But maybe that would be enough. Well, for, uh, clearly, that's for what Loras. that's what Brienne said. I really loved Renly. I would not have killed him. And yeah, Tyrion yeah. could have said the same thing. I didn't like him, but he was my nephew. Yeah, because yeah, what kind of evidence could Brienne have? given in his in her discussion with Loris. Presumably she just described what happened. And 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 I think it gets mentioned here, if she was dressing him in his armour, why wait till he was in his armour to skewer him? D- right. Do it before, it would be easier. A lot easier, yeah. yes. Before you put that breastplate on, shove a sword through his chest. But I'm sure that most of it was just her sincerity. Her, I mean, we've known she is wailed and moaned about his death ever since it happened yes and loris yes all loris saw was him dead in her arms and her covered in blood and jumped to a not entirely wild conclusion yeah uh, unlike cersei's dubious sincerity brienne's sincerity would be right really hard to to scoff at yeah but you know and jamie astutely associates uh, Courtney Penrose's death right. with Renly's death. There's no obvious correlation. We know that there is. Oh, we do. But, uh, you know, it's it's pretty a, an a astute observation that, yeah. oh, another person that was in Stannis's way died right. suspiciously. The person who was in Stannis's way and seemed to be obdurate and not changing dies in bizarre circumstances. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brienne does try to thank Jamie for his kind words on her behalf he's she's kind of touched that jamie said really nice things about her to sir loris and of course at that moment he plays his king slayer role and downplays all right, that he's done right. and acts like it was no big deal and he's the king slayer who's who takes his word anyway and but then he presents her with a hell of a gift i mean and, yes he does <laughs> uh, the valyrian steel sword that was supposed to be the lannister's pride and joy for many many generations to come is given away day four um yes. and- <laughs> oh boy tywin's not gonna be happy if tywin disowned him for previous uh just just them not uh not agreeing over him stepping down from being in the king's guard oh this is not gonna right. help the matter that's for sure yeah but jamie felt like the gift was mocking right which is interesting because because I, 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 it's hard to know. Obviously, there's some level. I mean, why give him that gift at this time? He forged the sword, believing that Jamie would come back whole. Right. Would you yeah. withhold the sword now just because he didn't? Either way, it's kind of like a damned if I do, damned right. if I don't situation. Yes, for Tywin. Like, yes. Oh. Oh, yeah, I, I was going to give it to you, yeah, but yeah. you don't have a right hand. So yeah. what was the point of wasting it on you? Or here's a sword. Oh, I don't have a right hand. Are you uh, mocking me in some way here? <laughs> so, yeah, I I do think it was heartfelt, but I could certainly see how Jamie, who's already upset with his father, could find a way to, to have yeah. a negative uh, impression about it. And, you know, I want to know what Kevin was about to say. Go on. Because... Jamie says oh, to him, "Yeah, he cut him off, didn't he?" Yeah. Uh, he says, "I." Oh, uh, he says it was a mocking gift, and Kevin says the the gift was heartfelt. It was encourage you to, and Jamie cuts him off and says, "What? Grow a right hand? It wasn't to encourage you to what? What was he gonna say?" 
what would he be wanting to encourage you to keep your chin up, Buttercup? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> to, to pick your teeth between meals. <laughs> <laughs> encourage you to step down from the king's guard. Right. Yeah, yeah. That is an interesting question. I also say that uh, Brienne is very right to question why Jamie would do this because it's one thing to free her to try to fulfill her oath, but then to advise her as he did about the false aria, to arm her with a priceless gift, and then to charge her with saving the person that he's just said is clearly the culprit in the murder of his own son. That is an awful lot he's just done in one (laughs) fell swoop. It really is, yes. His insistence on keeping the oath that he made to a now dead Catelyn Stark is is pretty commendable. Right. Uh, You know, even... She says to him, why? Why would you do this? You think this young lady killed your son? And he thinks to himself, because he deserved to die. And then he says out loud, Sansa is my last chance at honor. So, you know, it's it's a long way from the man who pushed Bran out the window. Right. But but also, just, just like... Just like his refusal to tell anyone why he killed Ares, no one's ever going to know. If Brienne goes and somehow saves Sansa, which I don't know what form that will take, but right. no one will ever know that it was because Jamie kept an oath. Yeah, just, just Brienne will know. He, he and Brienne will know, and, and I guess that's enough for him. His last chance at honor, I think, is now an internal thing. Uh, and we did we did finally get the confirmation, which we'd always always speculated that ice was melted down <laughs> <laughs> to form the two swords that Tywin had forged. One of which is now Oathbreaker, and the other one is called Widow's Whale or something. Uh, yes, Widow's Whale. Well, good memory. <laughs> hey, yeah, I should remember something. Uh, I know. I was a little bit surprised. What a terrible, irreversible act against the Starks. I mean, that oh, yeah. sword has been in their family for yeah. centuries. Well, but, you know, I guess maybe they figure Sansa's the only one left to wield it, yeah. and she's not likely to become a warrior. Give, so. give her a Valyrian steel sewing needle. But the chapter... Well, let me just say, I will say, I think there is one last chance for... Again, the goal comes down to music. Music is a powerful tool in the realm. The Reigns of Castamere is such a popular song and so ubiquitous that everybody, the first chord strikes fear into the heart of any listener. Yeah? Yes. So much. It's what they use to kick off the Red, red wedding. wedding. Any, we no longer need Castamere to lie in ruins. We could rebuild it and stick a spicer in there. It doesn't matter because the song, the Reigns of Castamere <laughs> is out there in the world. That's what Jamie needs to rebuild his honor. Get a whole posse uh-huh. of Simon Silvertongs to sing the song of Mad King Aerys, Wildfire, and good Sir Jamie saving the day, and then keeping his oath to save Sansa Stark, despite the fact she murdered his nephew. <laughs> and saving Brienne. He went back to save Brienne uh, over from the bear. And over. I mean, just like you could have a whole, this could be like an epic song, and everyone would uh, right. sing along to this. <laughs> That's what he needs. So many verses. Yes. That, that is that is actually what our PR firm should focus on, I think, is the songs. Oh, yeah. We we could really help him out. Yeah. We, we, our people should get in contact with his people because I think we could do him some good I, here. You know what? I, I'm al- I've already thought the title of one of my first songs I'm going to sell to one of my first clients. It's going to be called Giant of Lannister. And that's Tyrion. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So the chapter ends with Jamie writing a, a short summary of exploits, what he had been up to since he left King's Landing the last time. And, you know, it, it's it's just a little blurb about the, the things that have happened. We know it's all been part of this story. And then he stares at, as you mentioned in the summary, three-fourths of still an empty page to, to go to fill this page. And he thinks to himself he can write whatever he wants and one thing about George Martin's chapters is usually the last sentence or the last few lines are important. And this one doesn't seem to be, but I, I think what it's, what it's indicating is it's like him looking at this 
page, just three fourths of a page left over, is a fresh start for his life. Like from here on, he can write it how he wants to write it. He can start over right now. Yes, and also it's that same thing about I'm not leaving the King's Guard. I'm not leaving the King's Guard until I filled this page with my exploits. Oh, that too. Sure. Yeah, I could see that. That that others have gone before him have filled their page and he hasn't done it yet and he needs to for his own sanity. Yeah. All right. That could that could very much be. Why don't you provide us with some background information? All right. I feel like I can do that. Well, there so there's been much alluding throughout the story and our episodes here to Tywin dealing harshly with House Rain and House Tarbeck. And there is a good deal of backstory leading up to what's known as the Rain Tarbeck Rebellion that we just don't have time for today because today was such a packed full uh-huh. talking points chapter. So I I would like to get it to it someday, but uh, what I wanted to do today was explain why Castamir will require such a major makeover Please. when Rolf Spicer moves in. So when Tywin grew tired of the disrespect, young Tywin, yes. young Tywin Lannister, still heir to Casterly Rock. His father was he grew Titus? Tired, yes, Titus, yeah. When his father, when he grew tired of uh, the disrespect shown to House Lannister under his father's weak leadership, he chose to make an example of two of the more brash Western houses, the Tarvex and the Reigns. And due to a lot of political back and forth between the Lannisters and these vassal lords, the Reigns and Tarvex renounced their fealty to the Lannisters. Now, without consulting his father, Tywin first marched on House Tarvex with a host of several thousand strong. The Tarvex were caught off guard and quickly fell to the larger force. The castle was then destroyed by catapults throwing huge boulders, and then it was set aflame. All the Tarbex were either killed during the fighting or executed as captives. Lord Roger Rain arrived at Tarbeck Hall with his host as the castle burned. Hoping to catch the Lannisters by surprise, he attacked. Unfortunately for Roger, the Lannister force quickly rallied and forced the Reigns to flee back to Castamir. There, Roger's son, Reynard, had the idea that they could hide in the safety of the mines as there was no way that the Lann- Lannister force could follow them down there. However, there's one thing that could follow them down there, and that is water. Mm-hmm. So Tywin had all of the entrances to the mine blocked and then had a river diverted into a mine entrance. None of the 300 men, women, and children ever emerge from those mines. Uh, And to make sure that any other Western houses with rebellious ideas learned a lesson, he then had the castle set to fire. And both Tarbeck Hall and Castamir are now just blackened, ruined, and crumbling reminders of the wrath of House Lannister under Tywin. Exactly. Thank you, sir. So comparison with the television show, I believe that the whole false Arya storyline was dropped entirely. I don't think okay. that, that happened. I, I don't recall it. The whole Brienne and Jamie arc, I've said this several times, is skewed by the fact that they arrived when they were present when Joffrey died. Um, I couldn't find any reference to these various uh, attainders and uh, pardons. We probably didn't need them because those story, like because we're not POV bound, we we could go and look. We could go and check in on Brendan Tully and find out where he is. Right. Know. Sure. Sure. Uh, Jamie, uh, just to show you how disparate all this has become, Jamie gives Oathkeeper to Brienne in season four, episode four, when she, then she leaves King's Landing. That scene is very similar to the book, by the way. Um, but he has okay. the scene in the White Sword Tower with Cersei in season four, episode nine, which is a full five episodes later. Oh, wow. In a a gap. In a twist, she is the one that's more rash about their relationship at that point, and he is the one trying to talk her down from it. Okay. I'm holding a little bit back. Oh, holding a little bit back there in case it's a spoiler. Uh, The musing about the dagger doesn't happen, and... Show Jamie is not so bothered about defiling the White Sword Tower as uh, Brooke Jamie. <laughs> He's quite okay with it, actually. Uh, so, pedantry corner. Um, 
I just, I'm speculating here. I used to be more pedantic because it's been a while since I found any decent pedantry. It has been a while. Yeah. Our pedantry corner has been yeah. rather bare yeah. the, we'll have to think for a while. That. Or or maybe the editors are, are getting better yeah. as the story goes along. Yeah. There, there was one thing when Brienne started to compliment Jamie and he said, I got more rib on, ribs on my bones and less lice. Yep. And I was... I was thinking, but he had his head shaved, so... But you can have body lice, I guess. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. I assume yeah. you can have lice other places than just your head. I have an interesting fact about lice for you. Um, uh, oh. Uh, head lice and pubic lice are two, two different animals. They're not the same. Okay, good to know. Yeah. There's more to the story. That, <laughs> oh, that's, there's that's more? Just okay. That's the precursor. Oh. Hold your horses. <laughs> okay. Um, animals' DNA evolves at a, spe- a, a certain rate. The difference in DNA between head lice and pubic lice gives us a very accurate time for when human beings stopped being hairy all over. Oh wow! I know. I, I off the off the off the cuff. I cannot remember the actual number, but but it is. We have now a pretty good estimate of when we stopped being hairy all over because of the difference in DNA of head lice and pubic lice. That is pretty fascinating. I didn't say I was going to propose. I didn't say I was going to bore you with my story. I told you I was going <laughs> to fascinate you. I've proposed to you that we hold a, a science-based podcast, and these are the kind of things mm-hmm. that we would we would put on That's such the a kind show. Kind of useless information I got at my fingertip. All right, do you have some news and notes? Uh, we do have some news and notes. So we have two new buy me a coffee sustainers that we want to give a shout out to. Rave. And Richie Woo-hoo! have both joined the Squire tier. Thank so you, Ray. Thank, thank you, Richie. Thank you so much. Yes. And the Squire tier is primarily done as a donation since there's there's not really many perks to that tier. So thank you so much for your generosity and donating to our cause. It really means a great deal to, to us. And I just want to add that uh, our GOH account follows Rave on Instagram. Uh-huh. And she is really handy with a hula hoop. Good to know. Uh, I... I guess that's what it, it's a hoop. There's a lot of videos of Rave doing these dances with hula hoops in various locations, and they're quite impressive. So, uh, yes, uh, I applaud you, Rave. That's a uh, very cool moves you got there. Instagram. <laughs> yes, that place. Okay. I'll, I'll give it a check. All right, thank you, Rave. Yes. Thank you, Richie. Appreciate it. Um, and we have a cool new uh, Ghost of Harrenhal design from our good friend Dan. Um, we've added it to some of our merch options. Uh, people on the Discord server have seen it and they seem to like it. At our Threadless site, ghostofharrenhall.threadless.com, you can check out the new design and the new uh, hoodies. It's mainly on hoodies, right? It looks really good on the hoodie. So I, far, I I'm planning one. on adding it to some other stuff. Cool. Looks really good. All right, let's conclude this one. So I think the Spicer Westling treachery is confirmed by this. Or that Tywin really is a player. (laughs) I had not considered this option. I only thought of it as we talked about it, but it makes perfect sense, you know? If someone's betrayed you, then rewarding them makes it look like you were planning it. It's clever. Yes, it does. It really does. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. I bet... If it wasn't true, Tywin would be like, I'm keeping that in my back. Exactly, yeah. That whole drowning them in the mines took forever. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, gosh. (laughs) Uh, the phrase, uh, they also get rewarded. We knew uh, they were rotten. We had never any doubt about yeah. that. You know, Davis, who Lord only knows what Davis has happened to Davis at this point, but he thought that the phrase would be cursed because of violating guest right. Right. But here they get rewarded with uh, River Run. Mm. So, you know. But they didn't get the uh, Lord Paramount of the Trident. That's the curse. That's true. That's the curse coming back they to bite did not. you. And uh, the Bolton get their rewards, and I'm using air quotes, um, as Brienne puts it, <laughs> they're being paid with false coin, but they don't care. It doesn't matter. No. That they know full well it's not the real Arya, but they're going to say she's Arya, and they're going to use that wedding to claim Winterfell and the North. Absolutely. And like Jamie points out, there's, there's not many left who knew young Arya Stark. First of all, she hasn't been in the North in... A while yeah. when she left she was a very little girl so even if there were people that were like yeah i saw her once or twice they you know who, who's gonna say anything right, exactly basically yeah i mean especially when she's you know within earshot of ramsey bolton yeah uh, yeah 
yeah. yeah. Don't bring anything up at that point. And and Joffrey as the hire of the cat's board does make some sense, but it's not completely there for me. Again, it's 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 that how is the payoff work for him? Is he is he playing some really long game where he's imagining some far future deathbed scene where he finally reveals it to Robert and Robert says, That's my boy. No. That's yeah. not how it would work. I wondered if maybe there was some off camera scene where Joffrey told Robert what he did and Robert didn't Robert say we, we would not know because neither of them were POVs. Robert you know? turned to drink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean he left town, so it's not like he got to witness it or take any credit for it. So yeah, yeah there is a bit of an issue there. And oh boy, is Tywin going to be upset? about the loss of this Valerian steel sword. Apoplectic is how I've phrased it, I think. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They he's tried for so long to to get a new Valerian steel sword for House Lannister. And <laughs> Jamie just gave it away. <laughs> just here, you take this. <laughs> oh, that's that's uh, great. Good stuff. I'll say it's really good of Loras to give Brienne the benefit of the doubt. I'm glad that someone oh, is yeah. able to listen to someone and base their opinion of that person on what they say, not what you thought in advance. And like you said, I think so much of it comes down to Brienne's sincerity. Yeah, yeah. When, we've spent enough time around her to know that like, she doesn't have a funny or uh, like flippant bone in her body. She is all about honor and duty. And I think that eventually would come across Dolores too. Yeah. And it's amazing of Jamie to try to protect Sansa, which he really is doing. I mean, he is he is arming and helping Brienne to protect Sansa. Maybe she'll never meet up with her, but uh, he's doing all he right. can in the short term. Yeah. Even though yeah. he believes that she killed Joffrey. It is, could this be a bridge just a little too far for the for Jamie Lannister? Just just from the guy who pushed Bran out a window without even really thinking about it and, and still just such an awful person at the beginning of this book he he has become so hell-bent on holding up his honor I, it's all right let's look at it dispassionately for a second right it's protecting himself they're both protecting himself he had to push Bran out the window to protect his reputation because of what Bran had seen right he has to protect Sansa because he made a promise, an oath, to Catelyn Stark that he would send Sansa back and would protect Sansa. And so he's trying... So in some ways, it's still looking out for number one. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. So maybe it's not that big of a journey. It is. It definitely is. And maybe he feels some guilt about Bran, you know? Yeah, it's just all... Like a, a man who would push a little boy out of a tower window to now be so introspective and deep i think that's one of the problems that that jenny has with jamie is all of his development and changes and growth which i really enjoy and appreciate it all still funnels back to him pushing a little boy out of a window right but a year in a river run cell would give you that introspection losing your hand to vargo hope would also make you be a little bit more, you know, you'd consider Indeed. your actions and the consequences of them. Uh, and he almost died yeah. from the infection from the wound. Yeah. yeah. And as you said, what's happening on Dragonstone? Why is it so lightly garrisoned? Where is Stannis gone? Is he trying to get to talk to Dawn to talk to the Martells? Right. Could be a good time. They might be ripe for yeah. uh, insurrection. And we know that Stannis does get word from Salador San's ships coming and going from King's Landing. So he might very well have heard about Oberyn Martell dying at the hands of Gregor Clegane. Of course, it could cause a little bit of a problem if he arrives in Dawn because they are thinking of crowning Marcella as Queen of the Seven Kingdoms and then he would have to throw her oh. into a bonfire as soon as he arrived. And that's, gonna... <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. There's another bit of a conflict there, isn't there? I will say that like Losing Jorah last week, it seems that we might be losing Brienne now unless she becomes a POV or runs into another POV if she's about to go off Uh, on a journey. Maybe she does an amazing job of finding Sansa and we pick her up in the next Sansa chapter. 
That would do the trick. Yeah. 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 Uh, we got John next week. Back to the wall. We do have John next week. It, things were looking pretty grim for him on multiple levels. Yes. His, his, last time. What, when it seemed like he might be taking over at the wall, a bunch of people arrived in who might take over and not be his friends. Yes. He seemed like he might be. At, oh, it's worse than that. He's going to get hung, yeah, he, right? He could be at the wrong end of a noose Aye, here that's pretty right. shortly. So yeah. we'll see how all that plays out. Okay. There are four ways that you can help us. You could leave us a positive review. You can buy some merchandise at ghostofharonhall.threadless.com, including the new uh, logo. You could buy us a cup of Arbor Gold at buymeacoffee.com slash ghostharonhall. Become a sustainer at one of the uh, many levels that are available to you, as Raven Ritchie have done. Thank you so much. You could donate directly to our cause through our website, ghostofharonhall.buzzsprout.com. And if you're looking for more ways to interact with us, keep up on the latest Ghost of Heron Hall news and developments, check out our cool new uh, design that's that's been created for uh, us by Dan. Uh, you can check us and you can check it all out on our social medias. You can follow us on Twitter at Ghost Heron Hall. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Discord, and YouTube. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.